Yes, sir. And I will, I know the audience did not have the benefit of being here for the questions that you asked me at the work session, so if I repeat myself, I'm trying to provide you some of the answers that you already gave me, um, or that I was able to find over the past week. But ultimately, what's being requested here is a rezoning request on around 112 acres, or around 126 acres in total, for a subject property that's been largely undeveloped in the city of, or adjacent to the city of Lake Park. Uh, ultimately, what their request is, in its current form, is they're requesting to rezone a large portion of this, around 112 acres, to residential R10, which is uh, 10,000 square foot lots, and they are requesting about a 12 or 13 acre piece in the southwestern corner, let me pull the survey up, to um, general commercial. And that general commercial is because that was a change since we got the application. Um, staff negotiated with the applicants to change that to general commercial because we believe CG zoning is a better mixture with residential than CC zoning in the county is. CC in Lake Park and CC in the county are two different zonings. CC in the county is a crossroads commercial which allows for some uses that we don't normally try to mix with close residential. CG is what we typically try to see next to residential as in our previous case. So with that, that is the current request. I say current because you have had um, two of those changes, one to the commercial zoning to go from CC to CG, which in the staff's opinion was a good change. The second major change is initially their request included an 11 acre piece of property across 4-H Club on Corbett. And that piece of property here is denoted at the very northern end of the subject property. They have withdrawn that portion of the property. So that the commission is only considering the southern larger block portion. They're not considering that northern portion anymore. So those were two major changes that we got in writing from the applicants. I would say probably um, four points that I wanted to follow up on that I've heard information about over the past week. Certainly public input, we've had a couple calls in favor, uh, three calls against, and then just one call just pursuing understanding. I will tell you that probably the only um, question I have not got a definite answer on uh, is just lake access. Sometimes I think people have wanted to know, does this property carry with it lake access? I don't know the answer to that question. Maybe the applicants or their agent can represent that tonight, but that's one question I don't have the answer to yet. Um, I have heard multiple people talk about apartments being built on this property, and in the county's regulations, apartments are not allowed in the current zoning, and they're not allowed in the proposed rezoning. If the applicants, um, for example, sold to someone who wanted to do apartments, then another public hearing like this would need to be held in order for one single apartment building to be allowed. So I think that was a bit of misinformation out there. Apartments are not allowed on the subject property. I think that's important to know. Um, I've had some questions about the lot size. When people hear of a smaller lot size, um, they often go to like a blue pool or a much smaller lot size. These lot sizes at 10,000 square feet are very similar to what was allowed across the street in the Ponds neighborhood. That's also an R10 neighborhood. So these lots are larger than blue pool. They are larger than um, some of the rental units that are kind of behind the veterinary complex that people associate with kind of uh, in the Lake Park here for smaller lot sizes. These lots are bigger than both of those developments. So I think that's important to know. If they want to go smaller than that, again, it's like apartments. They'd have to show us a master plan. They'd be required to do that. And they'd be required to come back and hold another public hearing. Um, we have had some discussion about the master plan. And of course, I'll have to put that up to the applicant. I think they're going to speak to that. But ultimately, the county's current requirements do not require them to turn in a master plan at this R10 level. Um, we don't have that requirement. Staff did weigh whether or not you demand a site plan by saying it's a condition of approval. We did have discussion about that. But ultimately to say, is it required, it is not. It's not our current county requirement. Can the Planning Commission condition it? They can, but ultimately I don't think, um, in my opinion, the applicants are gearing this for a sale, not for development. So I think that's important. Uh, and then finally, the last question that I know y'all wanted me to follow up on is why they proposed the commercial zoning to go back uh, as far as it did with the size and scope that it was. And I gave you some examples in the staff report about how big potentially this commercial development is, and they did confirm that. They did confirm that the reason why they went to the depth that they did is because they wanted to try to market it toward a neighborhood commercial type of retail grocery store 
typically what you see with a grocery store with several small out parcels for um, other commercial type retail uses or restaurant type uses. They wanted to have ample space to fit um, a grocery store with those development out parcels in there. So I think that's why they chose that, that which is not a surprise, but I think with the particular agent that's involved in real estate, he knows what marketable property will. They don't have a specific tenant in mind. But I do know that's why I believe they chose that particular size is so they could accommodate for a grocery store with several other commercial restaurant retail type uses. Uh, beyond that, with those changes in the case that we got from the applicant and their scope being uh, decreased, the recommendation of staff was for approval with one condition. The condition came from uh, engineering. Uh, engineering required or wanted to put a condition on there that all of these lots are going to be required to front the interior roads. That's an important condition because with this much road frontage on the subject property, the engineer did not want a driveway every 80 feet fronting on the exterior roads. It's good they're all paved. That's a great thing. It's good it's got water and sewer there and the plans help support it, but still he did not feel like it was appropriate to circle the entire 4-H Club Road with driveways. And so that's why the condition on there. The applicants are aware of that condition. Um, they're not excited about it, but they understand. Uh, and they understand that that why that, that is being asked about. So I think that's all the updates that I would have. I know you're going to have questions, but I wonder if the Army's there has been conversations um, at different uh, developments taking place throughout the week. I want to give you all an update. Any questions from the commission for staff? Jason, can this can this body and or the county commission consider? the two acreages um, separately or approved or recommend is only for each acre separately? Yes, sir. I, I think that just the size of the property entails a dual zoning. I do think that you could make a motion that goes in the direction of, of either or, depending on which direction you wanted to go. I think what I'd request, sir, is you probably make it in the direction of a condition, so that way we can make sure that's clear carried forward. But yes, sir, because there are two zonings, I think there's um, two separate conversations. I'm not sure if it would need two motions, but certainly if you did a condition, it would be this rather than that. That would be satisfactory in my mind. <coughs> Any other questions for staff? Okay, no other questions from staff. I will open it up to the public participation now. Anyone here <coughs> like to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward, state your name. Nathan Smith. Uh, yeah, like Jason said, I mean, first two things, I mean, you know, our owner here, what she's trying to do is she's just trying to get in the same position as all the surrounding property. And she's, they've owned the family's been paying taxes for 60 years on this property. And, it's, and I know everybody's going to like it just to stay feel, but they're kind of reaching a certain age and they want, and all we're trying to do is is the CC across the street, like we said before, and we did go 600 feet, as Jason explained why, on that, maybe like something like is in a higher, you know, a little, uh, you know, grocery store up there or something, and the Dollar General that comes back to the table. Uh, and then the R10, you know, they just want the chance that everybody's had around, and basically if you go around this property, you go down to the 4-H Club, everything on the left side is R10. If you go on Twin Lakes, everything around Twin Lakes is RT. Everything around Dykes Pond is RT. If you come down Long Pond Road, the pond subdivision that's being developed is RT. Fox Cross is RT. So everything that's surrounded is RT. And then you've got around Balboa Lake, the Lake Park is RT. Ponce de Leon, you know, RT. Francis Lake Golf Course, RT. Really the register, they just want the same opportunity as all the other developers, you know, got over the years to sell the property. That's all they're requesting. They don't want to hurt anybody. They just, you know, they own the property and they pay property tax. And that's what their request is. Not a crazy zoning. You know, it's just, that's that's their request. And, uh, you know, and I just, that's where we're at. So I'm just here to answer any more questions. Any uh, questions from Mr. Smith from the commission? No, the models are 11 acres with you on the back side. So. Well, it went under contract, and the, the person that is buying it requested that we take it out. And, uh, and so the owner, you know, that was part of the contract. Is there any downside to the owner of 
we're drawing the 13.7 in front until such time as you have a, a specific contract and some plan for it? Well, I mean, again, I know, I mean, you know, I guess, but it just, it, it, it causes a problem when we have the first offer on the table, you know, they didn't have to go through the rezoning process, so they're just trying to get in a better position that we can market it, you know, and bring it back to the table. But I guess, I don't know what's the time limit once something's been denied, in Lake Park, what's the time limit if it needs to be tried? Because there is a time limit. So one, it's a one year. One year. So he, that, that corner lot can't even come back up to the zone for one year. From well, if it's withdrawn before the council, it can. Before the, council before, the council commission. before the city commission in Lake Park. And so there's a, same thing with the county commission here. I've got a question for you, Nathan. What about the property right there next to the Dollar General? What is that zone? That's registered property. I think it's R1 also. It's R1 also. Mm -hmm. Have they considered making that commercial? Yeah, and that it's keeps, under consideration. And then that can be used as a parking lot for commercial use. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And then put all the residential on the other side. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's 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 a it's a property that's been there since the 1950s. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like it's been there since the 1950s. Yeah. 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 Any other questions for Mr. Smith? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this request? Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request? Uh, okay, in that case, then we'll go. Anyone wishing to speak in denial of this request? No. She wants to speak in favor. Yeah. Any questions for Ms. Leola? Thank you very much, ma'am. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this request? All right, now we'll go to the people that I want to speak in denial of this request. Anyone want to speak in denial? Please come forward. State your name, sir. My name's Ronnie Sorrells. I live at 1100 West Marion Avenue. Uh, I'd like to see how the zoning board would look at this and how they would look at the Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak from tonight? Come forward, state your name again, please, sir. Dawson Hickory. Uh, what was failed to be mentioned was R10 zoning allows two places. It allows single family homes, stick built home site. It also allows 
home that are built off site and assembled on site to build mobile homes. And that property could turn into a mobile home park very easily under this zoning. I don't think we need a mobile home park over. And if you could put restrictions on what could be built, that would be different. All the other parties you're talking about had restrictions on what you could build on that property. I had a restriction when I bought my lot on Fort Stone Road that I had to build a stick built house and not put a mobile home on it. All the way around Long Pine, when they had mobile homes on there, if that mobile home ever left, they could not bring it back and had to build a stick built house. That's the code. If you can do that on this, I don't mind having a 10,000 lot, foot lot. But I want a stick built house and not a mobile home. Any, any questions for Mr. Beckert? No, but I would like to verify uh, with staff mm -hmm. if mobile homes are actually allowed within that this, the, the zoning this way. You can do a, a, a in the county zoning, you can do a double wide manufactured home or modular home in our tent. So we don't differentiate between the three. We just say they have to meet certain standards, skirting, width, et cetera. But whether it's site-built, stick-built, modular, manufactured, it has to meet those standards. And for our 10, those standards are higher than they are for the EA and agricultural zoning district. But they are still allowed, unless, unless conditioned otherwise. They are, they are allowed by right. As a commission, do we have the right to, be right to uh, condition the, the manufactured homes out in the mobile homes? You, it's something we've had. You have to be careful with, um, but the county commission has done that in the past. And on certain properties, they've been able to make a, a argument that they like site build only, no manufactured homes being allowed. Mm -hmm. Anyone else with a question? Right. Anyone else wish to speak in denial of this request? Please come forward. Be down there for very long, but it's a unique 
Any questions for Ms. Harvey? Any questions? Thank you very much. I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am, I can't allow you back up. Okay. Anyone wish to speak in denial of this request? Anyone else? I'm Steve Sellers. I live at 410 Jackson Circle. <clears throat> Thank you for hearing me. And uh, uh, I would just uh, start by acknowledging uh, Nathan's comments about uh, the surrounding community uh, being zoned R10. And, uh, and while that is the case, I think we've already heard uh, several uh, instances where uh, those zonings came into play uh, 20, 30, 40 people within their 50 years, as Mr. Ellis was uh, uh, discussing. And so, so that stuff's in the past. What we're talking about is how to make the future better for this community and this neighborhood. And, and for, some, for somebody that lives down there full time, uh, what we experience in the way of uh, challenges as far as uh, drainage, uh, water control, uh, that type of stuff, uh, even even uh, uh, you know the population growth that affects the lake itself uh, it is from from surrounding communities that have access. Maybe they're not on the they don't live on the lake property, but they have access. Uh, makes it very difficult uh, you know to uh, uh, to handle. And so I would submit that uh, this type of an influx of uh, homes. Uh, where you're talking about putting in even possibly uh, mobile homes or uh, manufactured homes that may not have a, even a solid foundation uh, under them would be uh, detrimental to the surrounding community. Uh, the runoff, uh, the water management, um, all those things. And then I would just finally leave you with a, uh, a question that uh, We've got grandkids at Lake Park Elementary, and the influx of 400 or even 300 families in that area, um, the school systems just can't handle. And uh, and so I would ask that that uh, uh, you know, a study be done as to how would you redistrict those school districts to provide um, the adequate care for and needs for children, school school children. And uh, I think that's a big issue as well. And so, you know, as we saw earlier, I would just uh, encourage this uh, committee, uh, this board, that if you have questions, then vote against. Don't vote for. Vote against. Or at, least, at the very least, vote to table until a better plan can come forward. Thank you. Any questions for the presenter? Thank you very much, Mr. Sellers. Jason, how are we doing more time? Um, right out of about 10 minutes. Uh, we got, um, I think we got two more people who want to speak, so let's let them speak. This gentleman here and then Mr. Ellis right quick, but please be timely. All right, let's go one. So, yes, sir. Uh, Barry Flatnick, 411, Jackson Circle. And, uh, I don't know if we ever addressed the question about lake access. Uh, at least I don't know if the audience ever heard it or not. I didn't hear it. Um, but I'm, I'm against the R10 uh, rezoning. I, I have no problem with one acre lots. Um, I think the R10 uh, putting in all those houses there will affect my property value and all the other people that are a block away on the way. Um, I don't think, I mean, the traffic will double, the crime will double. I don't think, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't tell you how annexation works, but I have to assume Lake Park is chomping at the bitch to get this thing rezoned so they can get it annexed into Lake Park. They're not capable of, they can't take care of Lake Park, let alone an extra 300. Okay, so I'm against the RQ. Thank you, sir. Yes, Mr. Ellis, quickly, please, sir. <laughs> and again, your name for the record. My name is Blake Ellis. 
on the city council about 15, 16 years, so I know something about that area. And what I'd like to see doing in that area is I'd like to see the uh, half acre lots. That's what I'd like to see. And I'd like to see the commercial be on the same side the commercial is. And I know Miss Register won't sell that, and I understand that. I know it's a burden on her. I consider her a personal friend of mine, and her father was a friend of mine. But I do think if we put too many houses on that, on that area, we will have too much congestion. And it is starting to grow in that area, and we need to control that growth. So we need to consider mediation. That's, that's what I had to say. Very good. All right. Looking for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. Uh, I make a motion that we accept the uh, R10, the R1 to R10, and that we deny commercial portion of that. Is that plain enough, Jason? Yes, I understand. Do we have a second? Second. R1 will allow a mobile home. Is yes. that correct? Yes, ma'am. So currently, someone can put a mobile home there now. Yes, ma'am. It would have to meet higher standards for the county, but a double wide, typically a double wide manufactured home with skirting, et cetera, a very nice standard is allowed. And, ma'am, just one question. If the property does not go to general commercial, would it remain R1? Would it also go to R10? I would, well, the motion that I'm making is just to deny that it go to general commercial and leave it as it is. Which would mean R1, so that okay. corner would say R1. I just want to make sure I understand that. Okay. Okay. So, if, if the second still stand? Yes. All the, and this is a, a motion to deny? No, the motion to accept to the R1 to R10 portion. Okay and to deny the commercial portion and leave it as it currently is. All in favor of all in wanting to uh, approve this request, please signify by the phrase the right hand. All of those opposing this request, please signify by raising your right hand. And we have four. So it has the front the it has been denied. The motion failed and it's now motion. time for another motion. Right. And now it's time for another motion. Any other motions for this? Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion. Uh, and my motion would be to table this and hopefully maybe uh, Mrs. Register uh, could talk with some of the uh, other people there who are concerned about the way this would be developed and uh, discuss maybe going to a half acre lot or what are their options that uh, maybe she and Mr. Smith could work out that might be more favorable to the other people who live around there in a highly residential area, which of course uh, they're concerned about having the nature and the, uh, the quality of their lives impacted in a negative way. So for that reason, I would like to recommend taking the motion uh, for one month to our next meeting. All right, commissioners, we have a request for table for one month. All in favor, please. Oh, excuse me, I need a second. All in favor of that, please signify by raising your right hand. All in, uh, against this proposal, please also signify by raising your right hand. So we have made a, a recommendation to table it until our next meeting. Yes, sir. All right. Now let me again remind everyone here that the commission can still act on this at their next meeting. So please, if you want to, show up. And the Lowndes County Board will be meeting on Tuesday, September the 12th at 5.30. So if you're still interested and want to have an opinion, please, you need to show up at that time. Any other business for this? Commission? 